Hi, I'm Jay, and welcome to your primer on suturing. Now, to start, the field of wound management in emergency medicine is fairly complicated, and there are a hundred ways to close a single wound. I cannot effectively address all these methods in one online module. Instead, my goal here is to just give you the basic motions so that you can effectively practice suturing at home, and next year in your clinical rotations, when you see a patient with a laceration, you feel comfortable putting in stitches under the supervision of a resident or an attending. Now, as a reminder, we are dealing with very sharp needles here, and in the real world, you'll be dealing with patients with blood transmissible diseases. So it is extremely important that we practice caution, both in simulation and in the real world to prevent any needle stick injuries. To start, we're gonna actually need to make a laceration. So here I just have a soft arm board. You could use chicken breast, uh, preferably with skin, uh, hog's feet, or any kind of soft object that you can cut and put stitches into. Uh, we're gonna take our scalpel, we're going to pull back our guard so the needle is exposed, and just with a little bit of pressure, we're gonna make a straight line, I don't know, maybe half a centimeter deep and about an inch long. Now that your patient has this uh, nice little wound here, our first step is to numb it up or anesthetize it uh, so they're comfortable during the suturing procedure. Again, anesthesia is very important because if your patient is in pain, they will flinch as you put in your stitches. This will be dangerous to both the patient and yourself. Uh, so here we have a syringe full of uh, lidocaine um, or the anesthetic of your choice. Again, we are working with sharp needles, so please be careful. Now to start, uh, a lot of folks may be tempted to try to numb this wound up by going through the skin. Uh, most of your nerve receptors are in the skin itself, so this can actually be pretty painful. Uh, what you wanna do instead is go open to where the laceration already punctured skin and kind of inject into the wound itself here, okay? Generally, I like to pick a spot right in the middle I'll advance my needle maybe half a centimeter in. From here, I just wanna draw back and make sure that I'm not in a vein. If you are in a vein for some reason, you'll see blood basically flash right inside that syringe. Uh, since we don't see anything here, I'm gonna slowly inject and pull back a little bit as I'm injecting, making sure I'm actually not coming out of the flesh completely. Once I have, I don't know, maybe like two millimeters left inside that wound, I'm gonna redirect the angle of my needle and I'm gonna inject again, maybe another centimeter going in line with the wound. Again, drawing back and then injecting as I pull out. I'm gonna redirect it now going down. So going in, again, maybe a centimeter, drawing back, make sure I'm not inside a vein and then injecting gently as I pull out. Now I've numbed up basically the left side of this wound. We're gonna do the same thing for the right side. Again, right inside that wound, drawing back and then slowly pushing as I go through, redirecting my needle to one side of the wound, going in a full centimeter, drawing back, and then pushing as I come out, and then finally redirecting it the last direction, centimeter in, pull, and inject as I come out. Now that the wound is properly anesthetized, we can go on for irrigation, where we'll physically wash out all the dirt and bacteria out of that wound. Now that our laceration is nice and clean, we can actually start to put in our sutures. And then we can go through the rest of our wound closure kit. Uh, again, we saw our tissue pickups. We're gonna start with our drape. And you can see there's kind of a corner missing here. So as I unfold it, we'll just drape everything except for the wound that we're working with. We're gonna get our needle drivers here which are gonna pick up our needles. And then finally, our scissors to cut off any extra uh, suture. So this needle is extremely sharp and I never wanna to touch this at all with my bare hands. It is always with the needle driver. 
Um, a lot of folks, when they pick up a needle driver, will pick it up like a scissor, like this. This is not how you want to maneuver this because you it's kind of flimsy in this hand. Um, instead, what you want to do is you want to take your ring finger and place it in here. And that gives your middle and thumb to basically grab on to the edge of this. And this gives you a lot more lateral control. Again, we're not just cutting like a scissor. We are actually manipulating this with the flick of our wrists. Okay? Um, with your needle driver in this optimal position, you're going to pick up the needle kind of towards the tail end uh, in the last quarter of it, like I have such. You're going to click, and you're going to hear that nice snap. That means that this needle driver is locked. I don't have to put any more pressure on it. It's going to stay in place. And we can kind of pull our suture out. Now we can think about planning where to place our sutures and how many we'll need. Generally, you want them spaced about one centimeter apart. Uh, here, I think it can probably fit about three. Uh, one, two, and three. Uh, the other thing is you want to make sure that when you're putting your sutures, you are perpendicular against the angle of the wound itself. And that as you're coming in with your needle, uh, you are also perpendicular with the tip of the needle against the angle of the skin like this. What a lot of uh, beginners will do is they'll come in a little too sharp and this does not allow them to properly evert or kind of lift up the inside of the skin um, that you would with a nice perpendicular angle. Again, pay attention to the motion of my wrist. I'm not just like sliding this needle back and forth. I am protruding my arm all the way back, making contact with the skin, and then I am driving and twisting, just flicking my wrist all the way through to a full supination. Okay, it's this flick of the wrist motion. Now let's get the actual stitches in. I generally like to start with uh, the first stitch in the middle. Um, that kind of guides and anchors my wound together, and then that way the edges, the stitches on the edges become a lot easier. Um, so with, my, again, my tissue forceps, it's going to grab and kind of lift the inside of the skin up a little bit. Um, that really helps to get my 90 degree angle. I'm going to go through, flick my wrist, and again, with smaller wounds, you can kind of basically flick and come out the other side like that. Um, now let go by squeezing and you'll see, you'll feel like your needle driver will pop. You're gonna grab the tip in from the other end and just basically pull that wire all the way through. So for larger wounds, you might not make it all in one bite. So what it'll look like is you'll go in and you'll notice that the needle comes out kind of right here in the middle of the wound um, you're going to advance as much as you can uh, by putting the needle driver kind of flush against uh, the skin. You're going to let go and hear that click. Grab it again from the middle of that wound. You're going to pull it out, stabilize it with your forceps, grab it again in the rear uh, quarter where you want to manipulate it. And then again, in that same plane, again, we were going here, we're going to come out here. In that same plane, I'm going to grab the tissue. I'm going to go perpendicular now against this vertical axis, which looks like this. And I'm going to drive it out until I hit the skin out here. Okay? Again, pushing it all the way flush against the skin, letting go, grabbing it here, and then pulling it all the way out. Like that. And you generally want to pull until you have about uh, an inch, inch and a half left on the opposite side. Uh, for the instrument tie, anything more and it'll get kind of in your way. Anything less and you might lose the suture altogether uh, through the wound. If it feels like it's too short, like this is, you can just grab with a needle driver and pull it to the appropriate length. Okay? Now we'll deal with the instrument tie. So. Uh, basically the goal is to make loops around your needle driver and then use that loop to go across that short end. All right. So to start, I put my needle driver kind of parallel to the angle of this wound, uh, which is going to be here. Uh, our long side is going to be on our left and our short side is going to be on our right. So I'm going to make a loop with the short side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over the needle driver and come back under. This is one loop. Uh, for the first, uh, for the first tie, we're actually going to do two loops. 
This is called a surgeon's tie. Basically, that second loop gives it a lot more friction, which is what we're gonna need for that first tie, since they're generally tends to be pretty slippery, okay? I'm gonna open my needle driver and grab basically the top quarter of this suture here, and I'm gonna slowly loosen with my left hand and pull with my right hand so that that tip goes through both of those loops that we created, okay? And now you've noticed that my hands have kind of crisscross positions where my needle driver hand used to be on the right, now it's on the left side of the laceration and my long end is now on the right because it started here. So when we cross, we cross positions and we're gonna tie and pull just enough to bring that laceration together, okay? And you can feel some tension right on that wound, okay? Now we're gonna let go here and you can see that that tension is still here because of that double tie. Now we're gonna do the same thing, reverse sides, uh, but only one loop. So again, needle driver in the same angle. I'm gonna loop around once over and under from the right. I'm gonna grab here with the left, and I'm gonna pull through one loop. So again, now the short end is back to the right side, the long end is back to the left. We're gonna do this about two more times for a total of four loops. So again, grab with the right, pull through like that. Loop over from the right side, grab from the left, and then make it finish right on the right. Okay, again, loop over and under, grab and pull, over and under, grab and pull. Okay. Now that we have the sufficient amount of loops in, um, I generally like to take this, uh, this bundle of knots and move it to either side of the wound, not the healing part in the middle. Um, basically this part can be fairly irritating and you wanna put it on intact skin. So what we can do is just grab either end of this and just shift it, because again, it's a loop underneath, so you can just shift it again on the right. So now it's laying on this right side of intact skin. Or we can move it to the left, like such, okay? Now you're gonna pull out the scissors in your kit and we're gonna cut off this extra suture uh, on the short end uh, and as long as the long end so we can keep using this long end of suture, okay? Uh, if this was just, let's say, a non-absorbable stitch where we plan on pulling this out in about a week or so, um, you can just leave about a centimeter of space underneath and just cut. Now we have the first one done. We're gonna do the same technique down here and up here as well, okay? Uh, this time, let's assume this is more superficial. So we can go in and come out in the same scoop. I'm gonna let go, grab right here at the edge, pull my needle through, and again, pull it all the way out till I have about an inch or so of suture left here. We're going to make one loop, two loops, grab at the edge, cross the position of my hands, go through both loops, tie, 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 tie until it's cinched down. And again, you can see with those double loops, even though I'm letting go, you can still see the tension there is right there. I'm gonna loop back around, grab, pull to the other side, loop around the middle, grab, pull to the other side, loop around, grab, pull to the other side. Okay? And now I'm gonna pull it and get it off center so it's on one side of intact skin. And this time we'll just make, we'll assume that these are absorbable sutures so that I don't need to take them out later. Um, generally I wanna cut them a lot closer, that way there's not as much kind of a tail that's bothering the patient. What you can do is take your scissors, don't close them all the way, just give a little bit of a gap left, okay? And you're going to find the stitch. You're gonna basically kind of slide down until you can't anymore and you're at the kind of the, the bump uh, where the knot is. You're gonna angle it so it's kind of vertical against that knot and then cut. And that way we're getting as close to the knot as we can without risking cutting the knot itself, okay? And again, we can do it here. I'm gliding, gliding, gliding down. I'm hitting that knot. I'm turning to make sure I'm not on the knot itself and then just cutting off, 
okay? Finally, we're gonna do this top one right here. Now that we have our beautiful sutures in place, I just wanna show you how we remove them, uh, let's say a week later after things are healed. Um, so they are properly made kits called suture removal kits, and it's a specially designed scissor with a little uh, hook at the end. First, I wanna show you why we don't use our regular scissors that we get from um, our suture kits. Uh, if I were to take the scissor and I wanna cut off any portion of this loop, basically if I went to the middle, I would basically stab through the wound that we spent so much time trying to heal, cut it, and pull it out. It works, but you basically injure the wound here, okay? Uh, so instead, these scissors, I know you can see on the camera, let's do a little zoom, have a nice little uh, divot where that suture would go um, to not injure any of the surrounding tissue. So again, I will make sure my suture is to the side. I'm gonna hook this right underneath. And again, I'm not stabbing into the wound. I'm just getting it right underneath that string. And I'm gonna cut and I'm gonna pull that entire loop out, just like that, okay? Again, I'm not jabbing it, I'm not stabbing into the wound, I'm coming almost parallel to the skin, just enough so I can get to, to maneuver the edge of that loop right underneath the suture, okay? And then cut and pull out. Lastly, I just wanna show you Two other techniques uh, for wound closure that we commonly use in the emergency department. Uh, the first one is going to be our stapler, which generally comes in a sterile packaging like this. Um, the stapler is a lot faster, uh, although it's not as pretty of cosmetic healing as the uh, sutures. Um, what you'll see is you will see that there is kind of an arrow, and this points to where the midline of that staple is going to be. I want to make sure I'm perpendicular with the angle of the wound and perpendicular against the angle of the skin. Again, I'm coming down like this, not coming in sideways like that. With my kind of opposite hand, I'm going to use a tissue forcep and just pinch the skin together the best I can and then push down and hear a click. That's your staple. Again, another centimeter apart. I'm going to keep my tissue nice and closed, aim midline, perpendicular, push, and squeeze. And here's a close up to show that the stapler also comes in at a 90 degree angle towards the skin and basically pinches in like that, just like your sutures would. Finally, for very, very superficial wounds, you can also use Dermabond, which is basically medical super glue inside of a can like this. Um, this stuff is very, very sticky. So before I start, I always like to line my wound up with gauze just to make sure I'm not placing this anywhere else uh, to get stuck. And even though it's a simulation, I still want to wear full gloves because if this gets on your hands, it's very tricky to get off. Uh, there's a different uh, manufacturing brand. Some come with these like wingtips to help you squeeze. Uh, this one is just a blank cartridge. Basically, you have to, let's see if you can get this sound right, squeeze and hear that nice crack. And now you have a chemical reaction. You let that mix in there. And then just like a pen, you go over the wound. And again, I like to make sure I'm pinching with my hands. And you'll see Dermbond come out, basically as a light gel. And you just want to paint over that wound to make sure it's covered and keep a little bit of tension on it uh, while it's drying, but be sure don't touch it directly. And just wait about a minute or so uh, for that germ bond to dry up and keep that wound in place. For more reading, I highly recommend lacerationrepair.com. This is a website with all kinds of in-depth tutorials and videos on all kinds of advanced uh, suture techniques which you should definitely check out. Uh, otherwise, I will see you at my workshop. Good luck, guys.